fishing literally saved my life. Uh, a very impressionable kid at eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, not being around that sort of a environment. You know, I was on, I was on the water. My, my dad had me on the water, man. And so I didn't have an opportunity to get caught up in a lot of riffraff, man. I was on the water and that's where I wanted to be. You know, I loved it so much that I didn't want to go to the, the park and hang out. You know, I got a few hours, whatever. I'm asking, I'm begging my dad, man, let's go. Let's go to Sausalito, let's go to Tipperon, let's go to, you know, all these places, Point Pinole. We used to go all these places fishing. And that's where I, that's where I wanted to be, man. Uh, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, directly across the the, the, the bay from San Francisco. I was born in a town called Richmond. Typical inner city kid, man. Um, I play, I grew up playing sports. I played baseball for a really long time. Football, baseball, track, uh, you know, and then of course later as we got older, some guys got into music, but there was a lot of, a lot of other things you could have been involved in, man. And that's, that's something that I, I thank my parents, man, tremendously for, you know, they, they've always supported me in fishing. We, they've always kept me outdoors and I was a, I was able to avoid a lot of foolishness by wanting to be on the water as opposed to some house party or, you know, just any anywhere else I could be. You know, I wanted to, if I had free time, let's go fishing. And so one of these times we were catfishing up at Hogback Island, man, when I was a little kid on the California Delta and we were fishing near a launch ramp and something just told me you need to go down the side of this dock with this worm and see if you can catch a bass. I'm like 10 years old. And sure enough, man, I make a cast along down the side of this dock, I get a bite and I catch this bass. It's like all at 10 inches long, but it was so exhilarating and so much excitement wrapped up in catching that fish that I was literally hooked from that moment on I knew that I wanted to bass fish and I just wanted to do this forever. It was the greatest feeling. I just could not get enough of it from that moment on. We're sleeping and all of a sudden you hear this noise, hell, hell, and it was so loud. It woke everybody up, right? And all of a sudden we realized, where's Mark? Oh, and he's hollering, help, help, help. So we jump up. I run outside with no clothes. I got my underwear on, of course, right? Run outside, and this kid is on a doggone broken, raggedy-ass dock. <laughs> she had no business being on it, right? Fighting this big old fish of some kind. At the time, we didn't know what it was, right? And he's hollering, help. And you can see this little kid trying to reel, and the pole's going down. He's coming up, and the pole's going down. I said, oh, my gosh. So I ran down. Make sure he was all right. And lo and behold, he had this big old catfish. I'm going to guess this catfish was probably about eight pounds. I think we had it weighed. Yeah, I think it was like eight something. Yeah, I think which, it was eight. Which eight don't pounds. sound like a lot, but, but yeah, I'm like eight years old. I got, it's crazy. I took a picture with my setup too. I got my rod, reel, everything. I, I used to love that pole. It's a little ugly stick. Oh, yeah. that was a big fish even today. It was eight pound catfish before a little dude. Oh, yeah. A little tiny pole, it was a sight to see. <laughs> it was a sight to see. I was mad at him because he scared the heck out of everybody, right? We thinking he's out there drowning or whatever. He's out there, yeah. help, help. And he trying to, he wanted to help catch it really in this fish. <laughs> I need some real help. <laughs> Man, it's funny, my, my, my dad always told me he knew that I was going to be a professional angler. You know, your parents kind of, they, they see things you can't. And my dad, he always, he goes, man, one of these days, son, I, I, I promise you, you're going you're gonna to be something in fishing. And I'd hear him say that, and I just, you know, you just kind of go on about your day. Um, and my mom was the same way, very supportive, man. Always had my back in this fishing game. Very early in his life, probably when he was, by the time he was six, seven years old, I knew that whatever he did when he grew up, um, it was going to have something to do with fishing. I didn't know what type. I didn't know how, I didn't know what, but I knew it was gonna be fishing, something fishing. Being a dad, 
you don't go fishing without taking your son. Most dads want to take their sons fishing and hunting and, you know, be a part of the outdoors. So I started taking him at a very young age, and then it got to the point where I couldn't leave him. <laughs> Me and a friend of mine left him one day, and he woke up, found out we left him. I heard he cried almost all day. He was sad all day long. Dad snuck off and left him. And I never did that again. So every time every time I went fishing, he, he went fishing. You know, he knows that when he was coming up, I pushed for him to fish. His mom pushed for him to play baseball and stay in school, which of course we all want our kids to stay in school, get good grades and the whole nine yards. But my thing was I knew my son and I knew what he was capable of and I knew where his heart was. So I pushed him real hard to fish, you know, and I was always there to support him. I tell him to this day I'm his number one fan. And, uh, you know, we've traveled the country fishing the whole nine yards. So yeah, it's just all about, um, you know, keeping him focused. Uh, supporting them and letting them know that they made wise decisions and uh, that what he's doing is the right thing. It's the difference of you becoming the person you could potentially be, the maximum potential, versus getting led astray one way or another. When you have that support from the people that literally created you, it, it kind of gives you a I can't be stopped sort of a mentality or, you know, I know I could do this. You don't, you don't, you're not looking for validation from somewhere else. You know, you got it right here at home. You're confident in what you're doing and you just feel like you can take on the world, man. And, and I had that from both of my parents, my mom and my dad. And so I think that really helped me through life as I kind of moved along in this fishing game. spawner which I figured they would be he has no belly on him whatsoever but that's all right he ate it like he was a mother. I think when I was 16 years old there was a there was a tournament I remember I signed up for it was a federation and back then I signed up as a, a non boater so I didn't have to have a boat to compete and this was a, a very cool moment um, we show up to the tournament that day we had our boat as well and my dad goes I'm gonna just fun fish, you know, while you guys fish the tournament. All right, no problem. Well, one of the pros or one of the boaters, he didn't show up to this event. And so they we needed another boat. So I, I run over to my dad, I'm begging. I'm like, dad, you gotta let me take the boat. I'm 16 years old and he's super apprehensive. He's like, man, I don't know. And I'm like, dad, they don't have another boat. They need one, otherwise two of us aren't gonna be able to fish today. And he goes, all right. He breaks down, he's like, you can take the boat. I took the boat, I fished this Federation tournament, my first time fishing as a boater, and I took third. And, and I won big bass, I wanna say. I wanna say I won big bass and I took third place. And I think the light bulb kinda went off with my dad at that moment where he was like, you know, this kid might could do something with, with bass fishing. Um, and from there, man, it was tournaments every weekend. We fished, me and him as a team. I uh, fished in my club religiously, and I just found myself wanting to fish tournaments as much as I could. He's a little skinny too, but he's 15, 16 inches. They pull so hard these spots. A, a lot of kids grow up in underprivileged situations and areas. I'm no different. I'm a product of that myself. Um, and, 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 they, and they narrow themselves oftentimes to, you know, the only outlets being sports, music, things like that. But there's this whole world out here, man, in the outdoor industry, but beyond, you know, there's just literally all these avenues that you can take that are so much bigger than what you see on the day to day. And so as I'm out here competing as a professional angler, I want them to view me and, and, and look at me and say, that's something that I could do without a shadow of a doubt. And having somebody that looks like you, that you could point to and say, hey, that guy looks like me and he's doing that, it, 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 it has a, a very heavy weight attached to it in my opinion. Um, because a, 
you don't see a lot of African Americans in bass fishing. So growing up, seeing Ish make it, I mean, I was probably in high school when Ish probably, you know, when he when he when he jumped out on the on the Bassmaster Elite Series, and not only seeing him but knowing him, right? It's like, well, here's somebody that I I know, right? He's black. He made it. Surely I could do the same thing, right? And that is penciled in your head. That is in stone. You, you know, that put another wrinkle in your brain. You know what I mean? And I'm like, this is something I could chase down. And then just following his career and all the success he had, it's inspiring. And so kicking back, watching him, then you see others come along, myself, Brian Ladder. I mean, it's it is a very possible feat, you know, for, for anybody. It doesn't matter what race, ethnicity, any of that, black, white, etc. It's important for people to have someone that they can attach themselves to as a role model to help propel them through life to get over hurdles out of situations that they may be in and just kind of use as a guidance slash roadmap to, to whatever career they might choose. There's so many avenues, there's so much information out there. These kids are so good these days with the high school fishing. They got tons of experience. Then you have social media, of course, the YouTube aspect. I mean, they, they, these kids are just as good as some of us pros, man. Um, the only difference is probably be the time on the water and the mental adjustments. But if I could give them one piece of advice, man, it would be uh, not to give up. And what I mean by that is there's, there's going to be so many hardships that you're going to experience between your youth now and the time of you becoming a professional angler. And so don't get deterred by the hardships and want to quit. So many people quit when they're, they're right there. You're right on that line. You're on the cusp of crossing over and becoming great. But because you, 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 you hit a wall right there, you hit a small hurdle, and you didn't want to jump over it or you didn't jump over it, you never made it to greatness, man. So don't stop. You get your mind on something that you really want to do. You stay focused and you pursue it 100%. He doesn't quit, he doesn't give up. I mean, when it comes to fishing, he will do whatever it takes to figure out how to catch a fish. Uh, and he won't give up until he figures it out. And he's been very, very successful at figuring it out. Uh, from the time he was a very young man, he would, uh, <laughs> I mean, he was just a die-hard fisherman. He, he didn't stop, there was no quitting him. And uh, I was really proud of him for that. And in the scene where he is today, I know why he's there. But I knew he was gonna be there a long time ago. Never, I, I never, I never counted myself out, man. I never gave up on myself. Um, you know, when I won that championship, I didn't have to take that chance, man. I had a wife, two kids. It was a big risk, man, for me to um, quit my job, move to Alabama, pursue this fishing. You know, I even had people in my family like, dude, you're crazy. Like, why would you leave this great job, retirement, blah, 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 to go fishing, right? but they didn't understand the passion, of course, that I had inside. And so believing in myself, man, I think has really been the key to success for me. There's something about the competitiveness of tournament bass fishing. Um, obviously there's the, the challenge of beating the fish, but then you have all of these big name individuals who are out here day to day and their sole purpose is to kick your butt in a tournament and my sole purpose is to kick theirs. And so the competition, that day in and day out, competitiveness amongst us anglers, man, is, is something that just really drives me out. I, I don't know, I can't explain it, the feeling, you know, it's just, you, you know you're competing against some of the best guys in the world that do this, and you can't wait to get turned loose on the lake to challenge them. My very first professional pro tournament was on Lake Okeechobee, 2014, February. And I went out day one, I actually had a really good day, man. I had like 19 pounds. I was like way up there. I was super proud of myself, pumped. And I just remember thinking to myself, man, I wish my family was here. Somebody was here to like experience this with me. This is like my first go. And so day two, I'm at the weigh-in line and I'm at the bump tank, I bump my fish and I walk up on the stage and I set my 
fish in a, in a, in a basket. And then I, I, I heard somebody say, say, uh, way to go, son, or something like that, right? Up and decided to buy a ticket and fly over to Florida and watch this kid fish this tournament. I had, um, I figured he may do really well in that tournament. <laughs> it's funny, he walked right past me and I said, good job, Mark. He didn't even realize it was me. Yeah. He kept right on going and went all the way to his room. And then I, I had to call him and say, man, where are you at? And he said, damn, he said, I'm at the room. I said, oh, you didn't, you didn't hear me uh, speak to you? He said, what do you mean? He said, I'm in, I'm in Florida. I said, me too. And I look out in the crowd and sure enough, man, my dad, he didn't tell me or nothing, man. He didn't flew in from California. He's sitting out there in the crowd, man. And, uh, and that was a cool experience. You know, we, to see him, you know, it kind of brought everything kind of full circle, man, from growing up fishing on the bay, you know, as a kid and him taking me after work and just getting that passion in me, you know, for him to be there at my first pro event was, was cool. Yeah, Pops, Pops has always been in my corner, man. Even if he's not physically there, he's, he's there. And so I, I can't forget that. Yeah.